This week, we had the crazy news ranging from Valve panning their own standalone headset to Facebook showing off their wristband technology that could allow finger tracking in VR to HTC Vive's facial tracker actually being able to be used on other headsets and Apple panning an Apple ring that could allow hand and finger tracking in VR and AR. But maybe the most important news we've had this week is that the controllers for the PlayStation VR 2 have been revealed by Sony and they're everything we were hoping for. So let's dive right into it. So what do we know so far? Well, as all of you might know, is that the PlayStation VR 1 actually used these controllers that were called the Move controllers and they were not that great. And the reason for this was because their controllers used the light bulb at the end of the controller to track your movement. And the movement was tracked by a camera that was attached to your TV. So what this meant is when you turned around, your controllers would be occluded by your body and you would not be able to track your movement anymore. Now, what Sony shows is that actually these are being used as inside out controllers and that tracking will also be inside out tracking from out the headset. So what that means is no matter if I'm looking on the back, looking in the front, my headset will have cameras on it and they will track my movement of my controllers, just like the Quest and the Quest 2. Now this is a huge step forward because that means we don't need an extra camera attached to our TV and it's all built into the headset. Plus we have 360 degrees around us that can be tracked instead of just towards the TV itself. Now another great thing that they showed off is that it will actually have haptic feedback and adaptive triggers just like the DualSense PlayStation 5 controllers. And that's insane because this makes it so much more immersive to have adaptive triggers. When you're pulling the string of a bow, no matter what you do in VR, you will actually feel it. And the PlayStation 5 controllers, the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback have been so great so far. And to see this implemented in a VR controller is awesome and awesome news. So we have the great news of these new triggers and haptic feedback. Plus we know it's gonna have inside out tracking from out the headset, both great news for VR as a whole. So I'm looking forward to see more about this information about these controllers and the headset as well, because they are actually shipping out the first dev kits to the developers already. So we are sure to get some leaks and some rumors, but also some specs very soon. And I'll be sure to cover them on this channel. Now, for our next big story of this week was Apple patenting something like VR or AR rings that you attach around your fingers. And it's actually two pair of rings on your thumb and your index finger. And what this could be for is for actually finger tracking and interaction. So what Apple said about this is that it can be used so that they know where the movement of your finger goes, just like finger tracking is being used right now with the cameras. But the problem is, if, if you put your hands together, it will be occluded and the camera will not know where your fingers are. Now these rings could make sure they know exactly where your fingers are and where they move. And apparently these rings also send out rays and these rays could also see if you're touching a table, if you're touching a different object. This would be actually very great. The only problem is attaching two rings every time might seem like a hassle. So it's a patent for now and we will see what Apple will do with it. But for now, let's just stick to VR controllers or hand tracking as a whole instead of these rings. And if we get more news about it, I will make sure to let you know. Now we talked about last week about the HTC 5 new facial tracking unit. It was actually revealed last week. HTC said that it would only be able to use on the HTC VR Pro headsets. And that was a big bummer because a lot of people actually wanted to use it on other headsets. But HTC said, no, only for our own pro headsets. Now, the thing was that a lot of headsets are now trying to build in facial tracking. And for the next generation of your headsets, we might see it already built in the headset itself and we don't need a physical unit. But it turns out that this facial tracking headset actually is not just for the HTC 5 Pro. It can actually be used on the Quest the Quest 2 and any other headset, it only takes a little bit of adaption and DIY. For example, you could use it on the Valve Index, getting a USB-C adapter, plugging it into your USB-C port, and maybe attaching it with some duct tape or whatever you need to the VR headset. Now, this doesn't mean much, but luckily, we know now that it's not just for the HTC 5 Pro. HTC said, yes, we see that it's also being used for other VR headsets, but this is not their sole intent. Of course, we will see a lot of VR enthusiasts trying to do other things. For example, the deluxe audio strap from HTC was also used on the Quest 2, and we see more and more accessories from HTC actually ending up on different headsets. So who knows, maybe HTC will eventually turn into a more accessory VR company than to a HTC VR headset company, but we will see about that in the future. 
And the next interesting story was that a user of the new Xbox said that they got a message that said that their VR headset was not connected. Now, what this means is not that Microsoft made any VR headset. Don't get your hopes up directly. And Microsoft actually debunked this and said that the Xbox VR message VR is not their focus at this time. Now, what did we see? I will tell you what happened. So this user actually tried to connect their audio headset to their Xbox and they got this weird message in Italian that said that the VR visor was not able to connect and try again. Now, we know that Xbox does not make any VR headsets. Up till now, they always said, no, our focus is not on VR. But this is a very interesting way of saying it. But Xbox said it was completely a spellings mistake was a mistake in the programming and it does not have any intent to make a VR headset anytime soon. Still though, I think it's very weird that they use the exact letters VR. But okay, that to the side, it's also weird that Xbox does not have any intent to make a VR headset. And the reason for this is because Xbox, just like PlayStation, is mainly focused right now on the console market. But PlayStation has the PlayStation VR and they also announced they're making a PlayStation VR 2. And basically for the console market, PlayStation has the complete VR market right now. And Xbox already has, technically speaking, because they're owned by Microsoft, they already have VR headsets if they wanted to. They were from the Windows Mixed Reality platform, but they're not implementing it into their Xbox. Is Xbox just being stubborn? Are they being blind? Or are they maybe secretly working on something that they don't want to release yet? I don't know. Leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are on this. Now for the next big story is a game called Gorilla Tag and everybody seems to love this game and it's very easy to see why. And the reason for this is that Gorilla Tag, well, let me first explain what Gorilla Tag is. You're basically a gorilla and you're climbing through the trees, trying to get to platforms and you're literally playing tag. It's just as the title says. It's such an easy concept, but everybody seems to love it. Also, the graphics are nothing to write home about, but basically what you're doing, you're climbing trees as fast as you can with your hands and you don't have any legs. So you have to climb and climb and climb and you have to make sure you don't get tagged. And the thing why this game blew up so much and why people are enjoying it so much is just because the concept. This shows how good it is to have a good concept instead of just focusing on good graphics. You can have the best graphics in any game, but if people don't enjoy the game itself, it's not gonna work out. So it's amazing to see this free to play game blow up like this and the developers are saying they're working on DLC in the future and I'm happy to see what will come from them. For our other big story of today, is that Facebook revealed their works on the wrist devices. They've been teasing this for a while, that they want some kind of haptic feedback, tracking feedback through a sort of product that they call a wrist device. It looks sort of like a smartwatch, and that's the concept basically. Now they showed off their research prototypes and what they wanna do with this is not just input. So right now we can use our Quest 2 cameras to track our hands in VR. The only problem with this is, like I said before, if we, for example, put our hands together or put our hands where our cameras can see, for example, behind our back, our hands cannot be tracked anymore. And that's an issue because you lose the tracking then. Well, with these devices around your wrist, we could actually have our fingers way precisely tracked behind our backs, when they occlude with each other, no matter what. And it would always be inputted into the headset. So you don't need the cameras on the outside anymore. Another thing is, this is not just for input, because it could also be used as actually giving you haptic feedback back. This sounds maybe weird, but what they could do is, for example, when you're pulling a bow, or when you do a certain move in VR, they could send a signal to the wristband and you could feel in your hand as if this stimulation was actually there. For example, you touch a button, they send a signal to the wristband and it actually feels like you're pressing the button. It's hard to wrap your head around it, but it's a very interesting concept and would very likely to see what Facebook cooks up with this. Because so far, a lot of people are saying, we already have hand tracking. Why would we need another device around our wrists on both sides for more tracking? Well, yes, if the cameras get better and the actual hand tracking gets better and better, maybe this will be obsolete. And that would be insane to see, but so far hand tracking is awesome, but it hasn't been up to the potential we wanted to have. So seeing any support from Facebook and any other companies pushing towards a direction for hand tracking, but also haptic feedback is awesome. Another very important thing to note about this article is that they also said in the future, they wanna work on VR haptic gloves. And this is basically like your Ready Player One, what we always wanted. We wanted a glove, or anything that really simulates haptic feedback. When you touch a surface, you feel that surface 
and you can, for example, not push through it, but also it tracking perfectly your hand movements. Because right now, only having hand tracking is kind of weird. When you touch an object, you don't actually feel it. You can push through it, it doesn't feel real. And that's the problem with hand tracking right now. I think moving from controllers to hand tracking would be perfect, but only if we have haptic feedback as well. Because right now with the controllers, we do have haptic feedback. We feel like we actually have an object in our hands. And if we just have our hands in the air without any haptic feedback back, it's not realistic. It might work for AR, but for VR, in my opinion, we need haptic feedback. And hopefully we'll get that soon. Now for our last big story of today is that Valve made a patent for their own standalone headset and a wireless solution for their now used Valve Index. And this is awesome because in the VR industry right now, we have the big boys like the Quest 2 from Facebook and the Valve Index. Now for the Valve Index, we need a cable and a very powerful computer. And the only thing is some people don't have this. So a standalone or wireless solution would be awesome. Valve also has been teasing this and saying that wireless and wired are not a problem anymore at all. And that wireless is easy to achieve. But yet we haven't seen anything from Valve actually coming into fruition for a wireless solution. So seeing a pattern for a standalone headset that is also wirelessly connected to your computer is awesome. We don't know exactly if it's just a wireless solution, so you still need a big boy computer to actually run this, or that it's gonna be a standalone headset as a whole. But we'll get that news very soon because these patents keep and keep on coming from Valve. So I'm sure we'll get some big news from Valve soon. And also the Valve Index is growing old now and they might have to renew their headsets. So seeing a wireless solution or a standalone solution would be awesome.